Sigma is a very popular hero in ranked right now, so today's a video on how to counter him. Also very popular is the Orisa Sigma combination for a double shield super bunker, which will also have examples on how to beat, but largely, many of the tips do cross over to every Sigma combo. In this video, we will be showing examples from all three roles, tank, support, and damage, all of which have answers to counter Sigma, but first let's start off with tank. First up is Reinhardt, who's incredibly underrated in general right now, as we've gone at great lengths to say, and Reinhardt's gonna look insane against any Sigma comp on maps where he can play close on a corner. If you could deny the enemy from coming out of a choke without taking a hammer swing from Rhine, he's going to be a good pick. But also notably are the other characters that are in this team comp. Lucio and Ana are key, but I think even most notably is Doomfist. Especially if you're going up against two barriers, you need teammates that are going to be able to W past the enemy's barriers with you. Keep in mind that enemy Sigma and Orisa barriers block off your healing so if you're playing with an Ana like we are, we have to be careful and mindful not to block off that line of sight when you need it, but Ana can also come with you on these rushdowns as well. Because with Doom, Ryan, and Zarya brawling in the front line, you're really able to stuff up the enemy, not give them any space, and play aggro. A lot of people are afraid to play aggro up against Sigma because he does so much damage, but keep in mind that it's your job as Reinhardt to sync up your shield presses with Sigma's big abilities. Sigma can carry an entire game, but if you're closing the distance on him and press up your shield when he throws a rock or in pace with his volley of hyperspheres, well, you just zoned out the best things that he does. Those are his strongest abilities, and if you're stealing space away, gaining on him and his team while he can't do any meaningful damage, he's slowly losing the game up until the point where you have all the ground, and the Sigma comp literally can't take space against you. It's in these matchups where Reinhardt looks OP against Sigma comps, but you need the right map for it. A map like Hollywood, these super bunker comps are going to more often than not go up onto a high ground perch, meaning that Reinhardt playing from the low ground isn't going to be able to close the distance and swing his hand so instead here we're playing Winston. Granted, they were playing on the low ground here anyway, but we're up against the May. So that allows us to flank to the cafe, get a lot of critical damage onto the enemy, pull a lot of cooldowns out, make space, create chaos. And again, another Doomfist player. This time we're playing with Sam Mito. In a few of these clips on my main account, we are playing with Sam Mito at about 4,300 on these placement games. And since we're going to continue to do this, the enemy knows they just have to swap. They swap these tanks immediately. Now, I think a big reason why Winston's getting very underrated in the meta right now is because players are so rusty at the Winston playstyle, either playing as him or with him, that he's performing a lot worse than I think he should be or will in the next patch on the new season when people aren't just one-tricking Sigma all the time to learn him. On any high ground map, Winston is incredible against Sigma, because just like Ryan, you have a barrier to block out his best abilities, and Winston can zap through Kinetic Grasp to deal damage to finish Sigma off. The biggest thing to get this playstyle to work is being very accurate with your dives. This is by no means straightforward or easy to do, but I do think it's more powerful than simply mirroring Sigma or double shield yourself. There are so many cooldowns and big abilities that wreck Winston's face. Whenever you're pulling attention onto you on a dive, make sure you land off of the enemy, okay? I see this way too much with Winston players where they just dive right on top of everything and get blown up like a balloon. You somewhat can do that if you have a diva pocket with you, but most of the time, you're not gonna wanna do that at all. And instead, dive off center from the main engagement, making a bubble that's gonna zone out some cooldowns, and then you weave in and out while your teammate does the work. Here I do it on Paris. If you look Back to this Hollywood game, I'm considering jumping up to the left high ground, but since my team's not really in position to make use of that yet, I wait a little bit longer, they get to the choke, now I go into the back. Big cleave on the enemy, pulling a lot of healing, minimizing that. They peel for me, opens the front door, our DPS W through, that's a good dive. But it's only a good dive if I dodge getting froze, hit by a rock, and all of that. I have to land in safety, not land to deal damage. Once you start playing Winston like this, you're really going to feel that Sigma or even even double shield, physically just won't be able to stop you from taking the space you want. But remember, this place is only good if the map actually has space you want that you can use. Big high grounds, lots of flanks, angles to actually set up for your teammates to do something. Otherwise, pound for pound, you will be weaker head to head in a straight face tank poke with the choke matchup. But if you wanted to play that way, you needed to pick Sigma and or double shield to mirror that playstyle anyway, right? If you're looking to actually counter it, you have to play the counters well. A few different examples of the other dive tanks 
then we'll get on to some of the other roles. Do not underrate D.Va up against the double barrier, but you have to remember what your goal is with her. When we're talking about these dive playstyles, you haven't once heard me say anything about breaking shields, focusing barriers, no, 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 no. That's going to be the last option if you're looking to counter Sigma and or the double shield comp. Here I'm using D.Va to get my damage through into spots where they can flank the barrier. Our goal here cannot be to focus the barriers. They have too much shield health. Not possible. The defense matrix is to get the team into position, eat the Bastion's damage so he can get focused once my Hanzo can get a flanking angle. And once my damage are in position, well, these shields are terrible. And realistically, I think my Sigma player on this map could have been a Winston if he really wanted, but Sigma sieging into it's not bad as well, mirroring that part of it. But it's the D.Va that guarantees that the big cooldowns and damage through the burst at the choke. I mean, how many times have you been playing pairs A and you just get bursted at the choke immediately? Well, D.Va eats up all of that focus fire for a few seconds and allows you time to actually get positioning. It's a similar thing that we're talking about with Winston. This double shield comp is so overrated and only works when you refuse to W past getting into better ground surrounding it like we continue to do here on B. I think my matrix usage is a little bit rusty, but it is coming in when my teammates want to W you, meaning that those huge hyperspheres, those DPS levels of damage coming out of the Sigma just can't hit my teammates. They can surround and we divide and conquer. If you don't play this way and you have Hanzo and Ash not able to get space shooting at a barrier all day, it's a night and day difference. If you try to shoot into the shields with characters that don't have insane shield break, you will lose against the double barrier. Before we move on, I wanted to take a detour at the DPS and support categories before we get into talking about more tank combos. Now we get to see this play out from the Doomfist's perspective. In this instance, we're running the double shield up against Sig Zarya, but it wouldn't make too much difference if they had double shield themselves. The combo you go for is having your Orisa halt them together and then Doom slam in for big shields and hopefully an insta-kill. And really, Doomfist is one of the strongest DPS in this meta and pretty much a must-pick if the enemy's playing double shield a lot of the time. Because unless the tanks make space for a ranged DPS, as I showed in other clips, it's really only Doomfist that can get huge impact past barriers. I think this could be made even easier if you play with dive tanks as well, but you could be running your own double shield bunker and have Doomfist kind of be the engagement guy. But just whatever you do, don't be stuck as a ranged DPS shooting into a barrier unless you just go ahead and pick Bastion. I think Bastion is super underrated if the enemy's running double barrier. If they don't have the engagement tanks like D.Va to get onto you and just want to put a shield in your face, well, Bastion wins those attrition battles because he has the volume of firepower to just continue continuously shoot. Keep in mind that switching between recon and turret form reloads your weapon, so even when you have to escape sentry form, you can keep shooting that barrier until your next reposition and then turret up again. Feel free to just take safe angles with this. Even if you just see a corner of the shield, turret up, burn that barrier, it's going to let the rest of your team have space. That's the important thing with both these picks, Doomfist or Bastion. They're such an obnoxious threat that they make space on the battlefield, whereas a lot of other picks need to be set up a lot more and don't really interact with the main things that make Sigma and Double Barrier very strong. The other side of this coin, and it kind of goes hand in hand with Doomfist as well, but Displacement, super underrated. Another reason why Dive really wrecks this Double Shield comp. Now granted, I do think Orisa probably still is one of the best tank picks to go for when defending a 2CP map. But you can see on this dive with Lucio, this fight is almost entirely carried from these boops off the high ground. We displace the enemy with our first boop, and we don't get a kill until we isolate a target towards our team. This might as well have just been an environmental kill. And whether it's booping the Orisa away from the shield or back towards your team, that's incredibly strong. And that's the playstyle you want to go for with Lucio. Also, Pharmacy is incredibly good up against double shields, because if they don't have dive tanks in D.Va, well, Farah just goes uncontested. Farah's Concussion Blast works wonders for this as well. Junkrat's two mines can displace the tanks, also kind of whittle them down from the front a bit, but Lucio might be the best for enabling this playstyle, because he can go in with the team as a diver. His healing song can work even when a shield's put in the way, because you can just run past it yourself. And Lucio's damage, if you hit headshots, is significant against tanks as well, on top of the displacement plays you make that straight up add to kills anyway. But remember, to get this to work, just like on Winston, your goal isn't to go right at the enemy, it's to skirt around them. Anubis is probably the best map in the game for that, because there's just so many walls for you to run around to actually spin circles around them. If the map's a bit more wide open, that might be a bit more of a struggle. But again, it's another option for you. The other thing we'll look at is the damage perspective. If you are playing a range 
range DPS, no matter what they are, really, your goal is to flank the barrier, unless your team has enough shield break to focus it. It's got to be one or the other, and I think a lot of people are confused on which playstyle to go for when. And I wish I could give you an easy answer, but really, it depends. It depends your six players up against their six players who's going to have more barrier bust. For example, if you have a Moira on your team, she doesn't provide any barrier bust, but a lot more healing so your tanks can play a little bit more aggro. On a Zen, does provide a lot of barrier bust, but are exploitable in their own way, so you might play that comp a little different. If you have a Reinhardt on your team, you can't win a barrier war, you have to take space with that pick, and so on and so on. But more times than not, I will say, flanking to win duels is one of the best bets you have to go for. This can feel scary as a DPS, and potentially throw the game if you go take a duel and lose it, but it is really your only option if you play some of these heroes. Otherwise, you need to play something that goes with the tanks in the front line, but actually can punish barriers in one way or the other, like Doomfist goes through them, you can play Reaper right on the hip of your tank to provide a lot of extra close range brawl. If it's safe, you can play Bastion in the back. Just remember, you can't really play Soldier, Hanzo, and McCree and expect to just always win the straight up barrier break battle. A lot of times you are just going to come up neutral in that, nothing lost or gained, and that's not going to be good enough to win a fight. And that's partially why it feels like you have to run double shield now, but I think it's more of a knowledge gap problem currently that people are going to get over once they start learning these other play styles and the very strong counters that exist. If both teams square up against each other in a poke at the choke play style, well yeah, double shield will just always be the best at that. But there are other things you can do. We've got some extra examples of dive team comps working up against Sigma, but first quick, some heroes that we haven't spoke about yet. Mercy's a top pick for me for a whole host of reasons. Against the double shield, her healing is always reliable. Granted, she has less healing than Moira Orbs and Ana Nades, but if that gets blocked by a barrier somehow, then you don't have that utility. Utility. And no matter what team comp you're playing with, Sigma is just too slow to get on Mercy and kill her. There's pretty much no excuse. You either should be flying in the sky or miles out in the distance. Even when he pops his ult, Guardian Angel is so strong that you should be able to fly out of it or Valkyrie actually looks pretty darn good in response to Sigma's ult, because unlike a Grav, where all your teammates are stuck together at close range, Sig ult has you spread out in the sky, meaning there's a lot of things that don't really follow up on that properly, so the Valkyrie healing can do the trick, and in my experience, typically you may lose one or two max, but even so, you'll have res afterwards, and when they're playing slow tanks, it's hard for them to get on and punish res. But even on the other side, if you're playing shield break, damage amp gets value passively in the neutral battle, Battle, whereas other supports have to stand around and wait for the fight to commit, Damage Amp is actually churning out value. And then the other hero that would be good at that in a neutral fight would be Batiste, in my opinion. He's number one. I've already made a video about him as well separately. And so depending on the map and how you want to engage, you either boop them off with Lucio, win the range battle with Batiste or Mercy, or if you're playing the Reinhardt Rushdown style, you'll want to have a Moira or an Ana. But keep in mind, they have to get into position to be able to heal the tanks past barriers. Now, with that all said, let's get back to just a final few tank examples, because it's the tank play that sets up for the entire team to feel like they can do anything up against this shield, because if you don't make space, it feels like nobody can play the game. Here, still playing D.Va this time, but now we've got high ground. Winston and D.Va up against an attacking Sigma. We're going to eat this guy for breakfast. And how do we do it? Well, this Sigma on the enemy team can't go from high ground to low ground and back again like we can. So what we're able to do is set up flanks, surround, harass from the back, and even with the enemy getting picks, their comp is so slow that it's hard for them to go take space onto the objective without being threatened by a backstab attack. Because we're so much more mobile than them, well, we can afford to yield up a bit of capture progress even when they have a pick, get our respawns back, and then continuously go at their back line again and again. And it's only with mobility that you can play the map this way. And also have faster respawns because you use that mobility to come back out of spawn faster even when you trade, meaning that their deaths are worth more than yours are. Similar concept, again here on Volskaya, a lot of teams love to run slow shield tanks on Volskaya A when dive really is the superior option. Sigma Zarya can eat a bunker comp alive, but here as Winston and D.Va, anytime they try to take any space, we just can counter engage every time. And because we're more mobile, we can pick the better fights and isolate squishy targets, which in a 2-2 
2 2 environment, there's gotta be squishy targets. This is part of the reason why May Reaper, new Goats comp, is all the rage in the Overwatch League, is that those two heroes are so durable. This enemy gets so frustrated with us repeatedly diving them that they go Reaper and Roadhog, which will punish us if we make a mistake, but the map's just so big, when with a lot of cover in corners, it's easy to dodge him as well, or use the Matrix to cancel any follow-up anyway. The other tank combo that I think is pretty underrated is Wrecking Ball Winston, either just against Sigma or against Sigma or Risa, for a long list of reasons. One, Ryan's got Steadfast, but Sigma doesn't, meaning that the boops from either Wrecking Ball swinging in or Winston's Primal Rage are teamfight winning by repositioning tanks outside of the barriers or away from their team. Keep in mind that Winston's bubble in combination with this blocks off a ton of healing away from the tanks, so place it down in between their line of sight and you can focus the front line. The pair of tanks also get a lot of health, either with big shields, the enemy's playing a bunker-esque style, makes for a lot of adaptive shields, and when they're clumped up as well, Minefield can see a lot of value there too. Now, be on a lookout for the enemy to swap to a Roadhog against this. I think that's probably one of the best ways to counter this tank duo. Otherwise, it's one of the best combos in the game, in my opinion. If they do go to Roadhog, you will want to pick the Diva, as spoken about earlier. But here on this Junkertown game, this enemy Sigma player just had enough of it and swapped over to Ryan, getting sick and tired of being bopped around, not being able to hit anything the whole game. Here's a typical defense that attacking teams really struggle to break. Double Shield Bastion on the high ground, this time with Wrecking Ball. I'm able to play in positions that are just safe the entire time. And whether I win my 1v1 versus the Sim or not, as long as I don't hard commit into the enemy, I can get a lot of work done. Keep in mind, Wrecking Ball players, up against Sigma and especially Bastion, hard committing in with Pile Driver is probably one of the worst things that you can do. Accretion Rock is incredibly easy to hit once you hear that the Pile Driver is coming down, so you'll want to sneak in Pile Drivers in between that cooldown so you don't get stunned, but also just don't undervalue swooping in to knock people out of the bunker and away from the shields. That's good enough. Your job is to sustain, pull cooldowns, and crowd control, not necessarily always just full-on commit to try to get a kill. You physically can't do that against the whole team when they have their best cooldowns. you got to dodge those things and play a lot more patient. Guys, that's going to be everything for this Counter Sigma video. I hope you guys did enjoy it and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to leave it with a like. It really does help us out. Let's just know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter, where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. Ivan Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.